Welcome friends to another episode of my Dreams Academy online tutorial. I'm your tutor Emmanuel Prime and today I'm going to be teaching you semiconductors 3. Okay, and what we are going to be talking about today is the transistor. Okay, now when we say transistors, transistors of course are electronic components. Okay, they are produced by joining two p-n junctions. So when you have two p-n junctions, so I have a p-n junction. This is a device, a p-n junction, and I have another p-n junction. If I join them together, I produce a single semiconductor material, which we call a transistor. Okay, which we call a transistor. And of course, from what I have drawn, you see that we can have two configurations for this. Okay, I can have another configuration so that I will have N on this side, and I will have P at the center, and I will also have M on this side. So we have two configurations for this diagram. Okay, now, so that is what transistors are all about. So transistors are all around us. Our mobile phones make use of transistors, the microprocessors in our laptops, and then so many devices we make use of are all made up of transistors. Okay, now from this diagram, we have two types of um, transistors. We have two types of transistors. The first type of transistor is this one, PNP transistor. This is a PNP transistor, and then this is an NPN transistor, okay? So, and the transistor has three terminals, as you can see. We have this terminal, we have this terminal, and then we have this terminal. Now, the terminals of the transistor have their specified names. They have a specific name. So, the terminals of this transistor, one side is called the collector, this is called the collector, C, we represent by C. We have the emitter, which is represented by E. And then we have the base. The base is always at the center. So this side, I can also call it the emitter, call here the collector, and call here the base. Okay? Now, how do we identify the emitter and the collector? Because we said that they can be on either side. But there is a way you can separate them in a circuit diagram or in a question. Now, the emitter always carries an arrow. Anyone that carries the arrow is the emitter. Okay, look at this, and then this is um, um, this is this. Okay, so look at my diagram. For this one, my arrow is pointing outwards. For this one, my arrow is pointing inwards. Okay. Now, if the arrow is pointing inwards, it means that the kind of transistor I'm talking about is PNP transistor. If the arrow is pointing outwards, it means that the kind of transistor I'm talking about is NPN transistor. So, how will you remember this? Remember, when you draw the line of forces around a, an isolated positive charge or an isolated negative charge, the lines of forces for a positive charge always point outwards, they are going out, then the lines of forces for a negative charge are always pointing inwards. So that is how you identify. So you see, in the PNP, the base is negative, so that means that the arrow should point in, and in an NPN, the base is positive, it means that the arrow should be pointing outwards. Okay? Now, in an electrical circuit, in an electrical circuit, how do we identify transistors? We have a better diagram for them. So a transistor, look at how you normally see it in a circuit. Okay? You see something like this, this is a transistor, and then you see an arrow pointing this way. So if an arrow is pointing this way, it means that this side is your emitter. This is your emitter, then this guy automatically becomes your connector, and this one becomes your what? Your base. This becomes your base. And since my arrow is pointed inwards, what kind of what kind of um, transistor will this be? If my arrow is pointing inwards, it means that it is a PNP transistor. Okay? Then for an NPN transistor, we'll just reverse the arrow. We have to just reverse the arrow, and that gives us an NPN transistor. Okay? So now that we know about these transistors, we need to talk about uh, their uses, some of their uses in electronics. Okay? Now, I told us that transistors are normally um, an essential component in our microprocessors, in our mobile phones, in our television, and so many electronic products we make use of. Okay? So, but some of the uses of these transistors include, the first one is that it is used as a switch. Okay? So we can also use the transistor as a switch. If you followed my previous video on uh, the second video I made, what happens? We said something about a diode used as a switch. So you, you remember, so diodes, 
are used to produce transistors. So some of the properties of a diode will be also taken by a transistor. So a transistor can also be used as a switch now, but a transistor cannot be used as a rectifier. Remember, when we talked about uses of diode, we said a switch, we said a rectifier, a transistor cannot be used as a rectifier. It doesn't allow current to move in one direction. So we can use it as a switch, we can use it as a voltage regulator, voltage regulator, voltage regulator, Okay, and then we can also use it in modulation and demodulation. Modulation and demodulation. Remember, when we say modulation, it has to do with uh, the coding of information into a carrier signal. Okay, and then demodulation simply means extraction of information from a carrier signal. Okay, another use of the transistor is what we call amplification. Okay, in amplification. In fact, this is the major use of the transistor, the in amplification. It can be used for power amplification, it can be used for current amplification, it can be used for voltage amplification. Okay, so that is the use of a transistor. Okay, now for exam purposes, for exam purposes, they are also going to ask you about the VI characteristics of a transistor. The VI characteristics of a transistor. Remember previously I told us that whenever we talk about VI characteristics, it has to do with what? The current versus voltage. So this is the current through the transistor in milliamps, and this is the voltage in volts. Okay, now. And again, if we draw the VI characteristic, we are going to obtain a graph that looks something like this. Something that looks like this. Okay? Now, in this graphical representation of I and V, you see again that this guy is not a linear graph. It is not a straight line. And if it is not a straight line, I told us previously, it means that that guy is a non-omic conductor. And a non-ohmic conductor simply means a conductor which do not obey Ohm's law. That is what a non-ohmic conductor is. Okay, so the VI characteristics of a transistor, this is how it looks like. So, maybe if we want to know more about the transistor, you can look at our previous video so that you can see more things, okay? But these are the most essential things we need to know about the transistor, okay? So thank you very much for staying tuned for this series. Um, I hope to see us next time. Thank you very much.